Number 41. What is the best coefficient of performance for a heat pump that has a hot reservoir temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and a cold reservoir temperature of negative 20 degrees Celsius? All right. So I'm going to use a formula I developed in number 37. So please check that uh, number out, number 37 here in this chapter, for uh, how I arrived at this formula. The coefficient of performance here for a heat pump is basically going to be equal to 1 over the efficiency. Now, If I want to find the best possible um, uh, coefficient of performance, then I'm going to be using the Carnot efficiency. All right. So now um, I realized, well, they told me two temperatures. They didn't tell me the efficiency. So I just have to think uh, how to do a quick substitution. And I realized that the efficiency, Carnot efficiency, is related to two temperatures via that formula. So I can basically just do a simple substitution here, right, where I say that the coefficient of performance is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 minus the temperature of the cold divided by temperature of the hot. And they gave me those values, so I can simply now calculate, right? So there's going to be 1 divided by 1 minus temperature of the cold, they told us was negative 20. Remember, we need this in Kelvin, so you got to add the 273. Divided then by the hot, which was 50 degrees Celsius, add the 273, and voila. Simply plug it into the calculator. So negative, I'm going to do the denominator portion. So negative 20 plus the 273 divided by 50 plus the 273. And then 1 minus that value, the denominator is about 0.2. And then when you do the math, 1 divided by that, it works out to be about 4.61. So 4.61, that's the best possible coefficient of performance. All right, so that takes care of letter A. And then letter B. How much heat transfer occurs into the warm environment if 3.6 times 10 to the 7 joules of work is put into it? Okay, so I have to now basically try and relate uh, a couple of things together, right? I, I know I can find the Carnot efficiency, right? If the Carnot efficiency here, here is just going to be 1 minus whatever this denominator actually was, right? So basically, I'm trying to relate then work efficiency and to heat transfer, right? Those are the three things. And I realize, oh, look, there is the formula, right? It's right over here on the right-hand side. So for letter B, let's use that. So it says that the efficiency is going to be equal to the work divided by the heat transfer basically to the hot reservoir, okay? Uh, heat pumps work oppositely to that of engines, all right? Uh, anyway, so... Uh, all we have to now do is solve this for Q sub H. Just simply switch the numerator and denominator there on the left and the right-hand side. So this is just work over efficiency. And then working this on out, right, to get those temperatures in there, this is now simply going to be just work divided by 1 minus the temperature of the cold divided by temperature of the hot. And all I did was a simple substitution, just like I did in the prior uh, part here. And now we just have to plug in the values. So the work here was 3.6 times 10 to the 7th. Then all divided now by 1 minus temperature of the cold reservoir was negative 20 plus the 273 divided by then 50 plus the 273. And here we go. We just have to solve it now. So here we go. Um, so again, I'm going to do the denominator. So negative 20 plus 273 divided by then 50 plus 273. And about point. Seven, eight, and then subtract one from that. Yep. And then let me just make sure I did that. 0.61. Yeah, okay. Sorry. The number did not look familiar, so I I um just double double checked. Okay, so the denominator is good there. So it works out to be about 0.22 or so. And then we're gonna take 3.6, which is the numerator value times 10 to the seventh, and then divide it by 0.2 essentially. And we get about now. 1.66 times 10 raised to the, what do we got? 3, 6, 7, 8. Looks like 8. Hopefully, hopefully I read all those decimals right. And that's going to be now the uh, heat transferred. Okay, so that takes care of letter B. All right, so letter C. If the cost of this work input is 10 cents per kilowatt hour, how does its cost compare with the direct heat transfer? achieved by burning natural gas that costs 85 cents per therm. And they tell us what a therm is basically equal to here. All right. So um, so for letter C, uh, first thing is we have to figure out the uh, heat pump is basically doing this amount of work. All right. So this is basically the energy that the heat pump is consuming more or less. So we have to figure out 
if uh, they told us that it's, you know, this amount of energy here is equivalent to 10 kilowatt hours. So the math here is pretty straightforward, right? If the uh, heat pump is utilizing 10 kilowatt hours of power, excuse me, of energy, and we have to find out how much it costs, and they told us that it's 10 cents per kilowatt hour, that means I can write this in terms of a dollar, right? 10 cents is 0.1. And then this would be per one kilowatt hour, they told us. So this is just simple, right? The units cancel leaving us with dollars, and this would then be $1. So that's how much it would cost to operate the heat pump. Now, in burning the natural gas, in order to transfer the heat from burning natural gas, it actually comes from burning the natural gas itself, right? So that's why they're saying direct heat transfer. And uh, therefore now, we cannot really use, we cannot use this particular value because this is not the amount of heat that's actually transferred, right? That was the whole point of part B. Part B, we calculated the amount of heat transferred and it's down here. So in terms of burning natural gas, this would be the amount of heat energy that would have to be released from that natural gas. And we'll assume a perfect conversion from whatever, from natural gas uh, combustion into heat. And uh, what we have to do now is calculate that. So for letter uh, part, I guess, part B of letter C, we have to now take this amount of energy down here, right? Which was 1.66 times 10 to the eight joules. Then multiply it now. Um, they told us a cost per therm, but we don't have therm yet, but we do have a relation where it says a therm is this amount of joules, right? So we can just simply say that 1.055 times 10 to the 8 joules is equivalent to 1, I'll just call it capital T for therm. And then, lo and behold, now they told us it's 85 cents per therm, so in terms of a dollar, 85 cents is 0.85, and this is per therm. So notice the units cancel, leaving me with dollars again. And all I need to do is now calculate. So this is 1.66 times 10 to the 8th times 0.85 divided by 1.055 times 10 to the 8th. And it's about... It's about a dollar thirty-four, right? Dollar thirty-four cents. So um, compare them. Well, per this, you know, per the amount of heat that has to be transferred, the uh, burning natural gas costs thirty-four cents more. In other words, um, it costs burning natural gas will basically cost uh, one point three four times the amount as using the heat pump. All right, guys. So hopefully this helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you in the next question. Take care.